Hello people on the internet. In this video I will be finishing a painting for my friend. She wants a composition of her reading a book with her two cats around her. I took inspiration from many references and I started with an 8x10 composition sketch. Because this sketch is too small for me to study her face, I painted another 8x10 folk stone only painting her face. This is probably the last time you will see me using this easel because it finally got broken beyond the repair. Thus, I looked into local second-hand market and found this easel. It costs $339.99, brand new before tax. This seller is selling it for $190. So I ask. Will you sell it for $105? I can sell it for 150. Okay, how about 105 plus two of my painting studies? These are just two random painting studies I did a year ago, plus 105 cold hard cash. Amazing paintings, but no. I knew he would likely decline it as these two paintings have no value for him. They were there mainly just to bargain, because I'm offering something, and usually the other side will offer something in return. He said no without a counter offer, but just the reason. His reason is not good enough though. It's about how he doesn't want to take a loss. But secondhand stuff has to take a loss. Plus, the item is ridiculously marked up at the first place. It's not worth that much, so I will not take the current offer. Alright, I guess I will just buy a smaller and a cheaper one then. I let him know that I have an alternative choice, and I'm about to go that way. Moments later, he offered me the price of $120. I'm 90% sure that I can make it down to $110ish, but I don't want to spend more time on this, and I think $120 is fair to both of us. So I took the offer. This easel can hold up to a 2 meter high canvas. Some days later, this friend had a new idea for the composition being an outdoor scene. So here I'm making a new composition design for her. Now the sketch is done, I prepared this fine oil primed glossing linen canvas with a layer of brown prematura. Because I don't have a detailed reference image, instead I have multiple references 
that inspired me to make this composition. Meaning, I can't just look and copy shapes and values like I used to. Instead, I had to paint with my own understanding of each object, their shapes and values, and work together in this made-up environment. That's the most difficult thing about this painting. This painting looked like crap at the beginning. I was frustrated, but I did believe in myself that I will eventually achieve a decent result. I didn't always have this kind of mentality. This mentality, however, have helped me a lot. That being said, you will catch me doing a lot of tries and adjustments. Like I covered this tree in the middle completely. It's better without it breaking the composition in the middle. I also rearranged the clouds, made them less scattering, and made the clouds behind our main subject's dark hair brighter to create a nicer contrast. Now, as I'm making this painting, some something really sad happened. One of the cats passed away in an accident. I mentioned two videos ago that I registered classes to learn from academic professionals. Here is one of the workshops I did. They cost six hundred dollar each, so I spend. Twelve hundred dollar for two five-day workshops. Worth it? Absolutely. I learned so much in just ten days. It's amazing. After learning everything on my own through numerous sources, mostly free and some paid online videos, it's really nice to go to a local atelier and just learn and ask questions in person. Most importantly, personalized feedbacks. This is one of the in-class works for Sargent's Ala Prima Technique workshop. The shape is off. Mainly, I didn't give enough tilt to his head, but for the amount of time I spent on this and this very bold technique, I'm happy to see an end result like this, and I'm confident that I will improve drastically as I practice more. This is in-class work for indirect painting. A Bouguereau study finished in five sittings. Again, learned a lot. 
I'm afraid this is all for this video. Consider subscribing if you watched all the way to the end. As I make progress, I plan to point out and correct the mistakes I made in my earlier paintings and videos. Thanks for watching as always, and see you in my next video. Bye.